was that? Did you hear that? I heard something. That freaked me out. Hang on. What was that? That scared the f out of me. We've been investigating the paranormal and uploading our adventures to YouTube for over a decade. Oh my God, what was that? That was a female voice. On our quest, we've had the honor of investigating some of America's most haunted and terrifying locations. There is a crawler or creeper or whatever you wanna call them, and it's real. It really is here. And that time we've had many intense and unexplained experiences while trying to capture paranormal activity on camera for everyone to see. Dude, the Tesla just went off. What do you mean? It's blinking. That means something is touching the very top. So in this video, we're going to revisit some of our more memorable moments while we relive some of our more memorable captures of paranormal evidence. Hold up a second, before we get into talking about some of our best pieces of paranormal evidence and some of our most intense paranormal experiences captured on camera, we have to point out that today's video is sponsored by Newer. Newer makes affordable yet high quality filmmaking equipment which is perfect for independent filmmakers like ourselves. And in fact, there is a huge chunk of our arsenal, of, from our equipment arsenal that we use that is made by Newer. These panel lights, which you see we use for lighting the scenes, you may have seen these in some of our videos, those are made by Newer. This camera slider is manufactured by Newer, which is how we get our high quality B-roll into our episodes. This took our films, our documentaries, our episodes to a new level when we incorporated this into filming our B-roll. And our next piece of equipment that we have added to our arsenal is this 4K 5.5 inch camera monitor. This is fantastic actually. We just used this today to film all of these interviews about our best experiences and evidence and it made filming them so much easier. Actually come around here Jason and take a look at this. So as you can see it fits very snugly on top of the camera here using a shoe mount and even has its own mount here where we mount our mic packs. But right now we have it set up very basically. You can also turn on focus peaking to allow you to make sure every single shot that you get using this monitor is in focus. You can turn on the zebra stripes for exposure. And of course you have your vector scope, your histogram, which you can turn on as well to help you get the perfect shot for whatever project you need. So we wanna thank Newer for sponsoring today's video and we want to make sure that we give them a big shout out for making a lot of quality equipment that we use on all of our episodes. Now let's get back into it. Sitting in Middletown, Ohio is one of the most haunted schools in the entire state. Post Town School has seen its share of tragedy with multiple deaths inside the school as well as what they referred to as a baby farm that once inhabited the land that the school is now built on. Some of the kids, that their health wasn't so good. They were known to just let them die or murder the children. During our investigation, we were told about a man named Lou, who was a janitor at the school, but tragically died in a trailer fire that claimed his life. From what I understand and people I've talked to, there's been several people that's actually made contact but my, uh, the room I get the most in is the ballroom room downstairs. And that's where the janitor was a lot. A lot of people believe after Lou's death that he never actually left the school because he felt that that was where he was most at home. To try and see if we could communicate with the spirit of Lou, the four of us split up. Dave and Steve went up to Lou's office where he had spent quite a bit of time organizing his tools as well as paperwork. Jason and I went down into the boiler room, which was apparently one of Lou's favorite spots to hang out when things got a little bit too busy. We didn't actually realize that we were in the presence of anything unexplained or paranormal until we started to feel like we were being watched in this room. As I was sitting back between the furnaces, I started to have intelligent voices come through the spirit box. Here. 
it wasn't until a voice came through that I really understood just who we were communicating with. Whose voice am I hearing? No way. I just heard it again. You heard the man's voice? Yes, a third time. Do you know what it just said? What? It just said my Lou. It said Lou? It said Lou. Lou, are you here with us? Lou, are you with us? All of a sudden, through the speakers on the spirit box, it sounded like a man saying the name Lou. Whose voice am I hearing? Whose voice am I hearing? Whose voice am I hearing? When I heard that voice, it sent chills down my spine. And I started to realize that we might be in the presence of the janitor himself. As I started to become overwhelmed with emotions, I wanted to know really one thing above all else. What I wanted to know was if Lou was happy at that school. So I asked him just that. Are you happy here? Happy. It just said happy. Oh my God. Hearing the word happy ring out through the spirit box overwhelmed me with such an emotion. I almost fell to the floor. And I can say that I don't think that I've experienced such an emotional moment on an investigation since that night. You heard that, didn't you? I, I heard it. I definitely heard the male voice, yes. It was a male voice and it just said happy. I, 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 hold on. Are you all right? Yeah. It's just emotional, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Holy sh**. I don't know for sure if Lou is still there at Post Town School, but I sincerely believe that we communicated with him that night. And if he is there, I hope he's happy. In 2018, we traveled to Lorraine, Ohio to investigate the massive St. Joseph's Hospital on the banks of Lake Erie. Throughout the, throughout the years that uh, St. Joseph's been open, have you heard how many people have actually died here? I mean, I really can't say for sure how many people have died here, but considering that the original structure was built over 100 years ago and they, of course, built on after that, you're talking, you know, tens of thousands of people at least. During the abandonment, I set a recorder up on top of a cardboard box in the medical corridor, a breezeway connecting the main hospital to its annex across the street. Now this one recorder was also connected to the route of diode. Both were placed on either side of this cardboard box. Of course, we start recording on our recorders. We start rolling on our cameras. We leave and we come back a little over an hour or so later. When we return from abandonment, we realize that the recorder and the diode had both been moved. We were picking up abandonment stuff and we walked up here and the route of is literally thrown off of where Jason had it set up. Now it was sitting right there. Yes, it was sitting. It was like this actually, guys. The recorder yeah. moved because yeah. I had the recorder right here. The router was like right here. I it wasn't it, on this. It moved it over and it pulled it over here. It had to because, <laughs> yeah. did you hear that? What was that? It was almost thrown off of the box and it had been displaced by about two to three feet from the spot that I had originally set it, not even two hours prior. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have an actual camera sitting on this recorder in that one spot, but you can hear the sound from the diode itself the exact moment that it began to move across this box. As soon as we realized this recorder and the diode had actually been moved during the time we were gone, it just really shocked us more than anything. It wasn't just a surprise, it was a shock. It was, had to have been picked up. And even then, if yeah. I drop it, it does yeah. that. Look, Don't it won't me. even slide. Look, it wow. even it won't that. even do it. No. It literally would have had to have been pulled. been pulled. If you watch, it literally would have had to have been picked up 
and pulled downward. Right there, and that's where it would have caught because the recorder would have caught against this lip on the... Right. Uh, for me, I know just personally that no one, there was no chance anyone could have been in that building. And as far as wildlife, there was different areas of the hospital where a thin film, a layer of dust on the floor from the drywall, there was never any tracks, no prints, no droppings. So we had no evidence to believe that something explainable had caused this to happen and move the recorder. It's very fascinating for something like this to happen. We're used to hearing noises, uh, sometimes visual sightings, experiences, and feelings, but when you have something physically moved, uh, no matter what size, big or small, it's, it's very, very intriguing, the fact that whatever caused this to happen surely had to have uh, plenty amount of energy. St. Joseph's Hospital, during its operation, had seen at least tens of thousands of deaths. And not only was St. Joseph's one of the largest locations that we've tackled, but probably has seen more death than any other location that we've still to this day investigated. And really comes as no surprise that for something crazy like this to happen, this recorder and diode moving, for it to have happened right where it did at St. Joseph's. I had it like that, and then we walk in. It was on the ground. Yeah. Unfortunately, since our visit to St. Joseph's Hospital a few years ago, um, sadly, we have to admit that the, the building has actually been demolished completely. It is no longer standing. I do hope, though, the spirits that were present in the hospital at the time of its tearing down were able to at least find peace. Now, the Blackford County Jail is located in Hartford City, Indiana. It is probably one of the more active jails that I've ever visited before. Can you push that off of there? Can you roll that right off of there? What was that? That was your door. The f Check it out, thank you. While doing the walkthrough at the Blackford County Jail, Dan, our guide, pointed out that there have been reports and also visual evidence of a very short in stature apparition seen traveling about the facility. And got it on video, and you see this little, whatever going, take a step like this as the camera's panning. But it was, jo it was a jokester. Mm-hmm, yeah. They're jokesters. Now for that evening, we were actually working a collaboration with the Foreman Brothers, or also known as Paranormal Nightmare. We had just got done doing a group session in the cell block on the first level. If you need help, come up here, we'll help you. Now we were making our way into the main intake area where the inmates would go, you know, would come in and be processed and then taken to their cells. And we decided to move on into the, one of the front rooms of the jail. And it's also the room where the sheriff had been reported to have passed away from a fatal heart attack. Now, Sean was the first in the room. Oh, that cat in here? Or that the cat is in, that's the office right there. That's the room the sheriff died. Something just took off freaking running. Did it? This battery. He was sitting over here, let me go look. And he actually noticed and heard a very short shadow figure going right from left from that room and leaving into the front hallway, stairwell area. Yeah, because if I had to guess, that's what I would have, I would have figured it was a freaking cat or something like that. I don't know, he kept saying there was like little gnomes that ran around this place. Now initially, Sean and the rest of the group believed that it might have been uh, Dan's cat. There is a cat that resides there also at the jail. But upon entering the opposite room, we noticed that the cat was sound asleep on the couch. So there's no way it could have been the cat. No, he's asleep on the couch. Now upon after doing evidence review, we were completely elated to see that we have actually visually captured uh, that shadow. Yeah, something was about right here and took off. And you could hear it, but it, it was like that dragon on the carpet. Yeah. You could hear it. And it took off freaking running that way. What visual evidence we picked up actually matched exactly what Sean was describing in the moment. Uh, whatever I see, it could only 
like that. It was freaking tiny. Like I said, the freaking hearing it scooting on the floor is what got me. Now with all the documented history, the deaths, the violence um, that comes with the Blackford County Jail, it's no wonder that it's considered one of the more active places in the country. And as for the short shadow figure that we documented, you know, what it is, we have no idea. Sitting in the heart of Savannah, Georgia, is one of the most infamous restaurants and breweries in the country. Famously known as Moon River Brewing Company, this was one of the most intense investigations that I have personally ever been on. Is there anybody here who contracted yellow fever? It's an awful disease. Holy sh! Oh my God. Oh, I have chills all over my body right now. I'm sorry for my language. That is just phenomenal. I have chills so bad. In the beginning of the night on this investigation, it was an average run-of-the-mill night for me. I felt perfectly normal. I'm going to go ahead and sit down here at the bar. If anybody would like to come and talk to me, please let me know. But as the night progressed, I started getting more and more of, of a feeling that I was being affected by something. <laughs> I just kind of like spaced out and something told me to walk back there and I started moving off. Midway through the investigation, we started doing a portal session down in the basement where we also had a Periscope 360 sitting on the back side of the room. I pointed at the Periscope and I said go. And as soon as that happened, the entire unit lit up. You turn. Oh, there it went. I just caught that. Would the curtain move? No, the periscope went off. And it lit up as if something was listening to what I said to go over towards the device. And just at that same moment, it just instantaneously lit up. You turn. Oh, there it went. I just caught that. Most of what happened that night, to me, I do not remember happening. Watching it back on the final episode was very eerie. What? I don't even remember seeing that. Right there, yep. That smile and that laugh. <laughs> yeah, that said face. That smile and that laugh. Look at your face. Oh, wow. Just keep As you walk upstairs, giggling and laughing. Yeah. It was very strange to watch yourself go through all of these actions and roam throughout the building, but not ever remember it really happening. Something was definitely off yeah. uh, that night, and apparently I didn't realize how off that it was until now. Looking back at the episode, that was very strange because I do not remember that, and I guess at one point I went up another level by myself, which freaked everybody out that was in the room. I don't think I was pointing the camera that way. Mm. Yeah, by the time we made it up to the fourth floor where the brick circle was, I that's where I kind of vaguely started remembering things happening. I know Steve messing with one of the bricks in the circle because he was told he could bring one back with him. And when he was selecting the brick, I just got, you know, overwhelmed, and I had to leave the building. I, uh, I'm going to go outside. Okay. If you need anything, let us know, okay? Right, he's freaking weird. He said he needed to go outside. Did he go outside or come to you? He went outside because I was in the basement. So I made my way back upstairs and I met back up with everybody. And at that point, I wanted to talk, you know, with everybody about everything that had been going on. I wanted the cameras to be shut off so people didn't think that I was doing it just for the cameras. Uh, well, I mean, I really don't really want to talk about it on camera. 
Okay. So the energy became very overwhelming, and I remember stepping back, and I, I had looked up, and I saw what appeared to be a, a shadow figure in the rafters above us. And I believed at the time, and I still believe at the time, that whatever was trying to affect me in that moment had kind of manifested, and that's what was, was bouncing around the room. Steve had offered to do a prayer for all of us because the energy was, was incredible at that point. Dear Ms. Donna, I'm on behalf of my, my three friends to be my best friend. Watch over them, watch over us, keep us safe. Unbind anything that has been bound to us at this point in our lives or prior to this point in our lives. And as Steve started talking, I audibly, Steve and I both heard a hiss within the room. Any unclean spirit, evil spirit, <laughs> they must leave. Any unclean spirit, evil spirit. And the odd thing about that is Ryan, who was standing there as well, did not hear it. After having heard that hiss in the room, our guest investigator became completely hysterical, and at that point we had to leave. Let's go downstairs. <laughs> No, this is, it's me. It's fine. It's me. It's me. So the next morning, Steve had reminded me that he had the brick that he selected the night before. And I personally, having what happened to me, didn't feel comfortable riding all the way back home with that brick. And I forced Steve to ship it back home. When we got back, we did an unboxing of that in Steve's old museum. This right here is circling description of goods, brick. But what is in this box is that brick from that brick circle where the right. activity was based around right. on that investigation on that fourth floor. And all three of us audibly heard a hissing sound from within the room, which we actually captured. This is the part that we're really... What the f***? This sounded like a hiss. I heard that one. My God. This is the part that we're really... This is the part that we're really... What the f***? Let's look outside real quick. Okay. No, that was f***ing creepy and there is no... I'm gonna stand here just as... There is no way that that... No was not picked up. The Moon River Brewing Company investigation was one of the most intense investigations that I've ever personally been on. And still to this day, I probably would not go back. Um, it's just an incredible energy within that building. The next piece of evidence and experience on the countdown comes from the small town of Bel Air, Ohio. Sitting within this tiny, quiet town is one of the most haunted houses in the United States of America. So infamous for the paranormal activity and possible spiritual portals that lie within, it has been featured on many national television networks and many popular YouTube series have spent the night there to try and see if they can communicate with the spirits that have famously made this house the Bel Air House. This was the second investigation that we had performed and filmed for our channel. And the Bel Air House is a place that we are fairly familiar with. Uh, we've known Kristen for quite a number of years. We've held multiple events in the Bel Air House and we've had many paranormal experiences there as well. But nothing could prepare us for what would happen that night. That scared the f out of me. Oh, wow. While we were in the basement performing our first session of the night, we were having some strange equipment manipulations of the EDI plus meter. Thank you. That was interesting. Yeah. Is that you? Can you touch that device as well? Afterwards, we split up into two groups. Steve and I went upstairs to investigate the living room while Jason and Dave remained in the basement. While Steve and I had just sat down on the couches and were preparing to begin asking questions, 
Jason and Dave were feeling a strange presence still with them in the basement. I have cold chills. Really? Yeah. It's in the same spot where Ryan felt it earlier. I have cold chills really bad. I can feel that you're down here with us. But then as quickly as that energy came, Dave said that he felt it leave. I felt it leave? Right after Dave said that he felt that energy leave, Steve and I had one of the most intense moments of the entire night. I felt it leave. Whoa. What the f Dude, that camera was set up there. That camera just got thrown off of that chair. No kidding, man. He said the camera just got thrown off the chair. What the, the camera f at that ball? That was the action cam. Where's the ball at? The no. action. Oh, sh Cause I put the ball right here. It's right here. Oh sh! Oh my god, dude! The, f the, the camera just... Oh my gosh! That scared the f out of me. Oh wow! And yeah, it sounded like it was right above your head. I wonder if that was. Man. You just said that you felt like it left. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I felt it leave. Whoa. No kidding, man. He said the camera just got thrown off the chair. There's no light. What's up? The odd thing is, is right before that happened, I was standing right where Ryan was standing earlier, and I got overwhelmed with uh, goosebumps. And I said, if if that's you, can you please go over there and make that light up again? And I felt all of the goosebumps go away. And as soon as I told Jason, I said, I just felt it all go away. That happened up here. That's weird. That's insane. And it literally, that action cam was sitting there for how many minutes? Like. Since since I set it up there, right. and we and he was sitting on the couch for at least two or three minutes, and then just bam down, and it's not sitting no. where it would have just fallen. It's actually right. like move, move. What was so bizarre and intriguing about this was that we had been sitting on the couch for a couple minutes at that point. It would be explainable if we had been moving or walking or bouncing around on the floor around that chair to cause the vibrations to have it fall off, but we were sitting down stationary when it happened. I felt it leave. Whoa. What the f Whoa. Dude, that camera was set up there. That camera just got thrown off of that chair. No kidding, man. A part of paranormal investigation is trying to prove that what you experienced wasn't caused by some natural force. So we jumped on the floor around the camera multiple times. We stomped around it. We tried everything we could for the vibrations of the floor to make that camera fall off the chair again, just as it did. But bizarrely and strangely, no matter how hard we tried, the camera would not fall off. We're not sure what caused that camera to fly off of that chair and onto the floor. Whoa. What the f Dude, that camera was set up there. That camera just got thrown off of that chair. But we do know that the Bel Air house is one of the most charged and haunted houses in America. The West Virginia State Penitentiary opened in 1866 and finally closed later on March 27, 1995. And this prison was one of the most violent prisons in the country. On our recent investigation at the West Virginia Penitentiary, we conducted a session in the basement area in a room we call the Sugar Shack. As soon as we began to investigate the Sugar Shack, Ryan's camera experienced an error that would no longer allow it to record footage. Buffer it's overload could not write data in time and then it had to recover the files that we recorded. Ah. Are you serious? I mean, it did recover. But... Now all night, the memory card and the camera had no issues until this exact moment. Shortly after his camera started having these malfunctions, I felt a sensation on my left hand that felt as if someone was taking their fingers and rubbing them on my fingers. No, I can go up and get it. Oh, God, what was that? What? Whoa. What was that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, God, what was that? Okay, 
seconds. What the f was that? I had my camera pointing in your direction. Feeling this hand touch my left hand was very, very startling to me uh, as an understatement to say the least. And I reacted very violently at the moment because again, I knew that there was no logical explanation for what I was feeling. I had not brushed up into a column. I was standing a couple feet from Ryan uh, and I could feel the sensation, not just of some external object, but I could feel what seemed to be actual fingertips on the edge of my hand. I've never seen this. What was that? What happened, what happened? <laughs> that freaked me out, hang on, what was that? What is going on? Something just f grabbed my hand. Well, I, I had my camera just touched my, my f***ing hand. I had my my camera pointing that direction. Okay, good, good, good. good. I don't know. Moved. Ryan was right where I was at. Oh wow, that was creepy. For lack of better wording, it gave me what I would call a creepy crawly feeling. Uh, it just felt like uh, I had to shake it off immediately, and so that's why I moved away from that spot rather quickly. I had my hand like right here, and I swear to God, it felt like, like, like fingers, like, like, like doing that. That's really on my fingers. Weird. Whoa, shit, that freaked me out. That's weird. There's nothing hanging down either. No. Oh, God, sorry about that, but that no, was no. That, that's a raw reaction, man. That, that, I'll admit that kind of freaked me a bit. That's why we're here. I got freaked. But it seemed like whoever it was in that area with us definitely wanted to get our attention. Definitely wanted to get my attention, and undoubtedly they had no problem doing that. As the session continued. We began an Estes method, and Dave is listening to the S-Box. We began to find very, very quickly that we were actually really in the presence of some intelligent spirit. Who is down here that just touched Jason? Steve. Is your name Steve? Or are you talking about Steve who's standing over there? As the session continued, Dave began to hear the name Steve come through the S box as we're conducting an SD session. The name Steve came through dozens of times and we are unsure if the spirit's name was Steve or if this entity was referring to our Steve. 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 Regardless, this was more unsettling as we continue because after the cameras uh, began to malfunction, and at this point, half of us had already been touched in the sugar shack, we're really starting to become concerned as to what or who we're dealing with. Get out. We started having interaction with the cat balls on the floor. Cat balls. Four. Steve, there's four. Let's see if Steve there is. Thank you. A little bit later on, we even heard a noise. It sounded like a shuffling, a movement, come from one far corner of the sugar shack. At this exact same moment, over the S box, Dave very clearly heard a voice that said, "Let's go." You did it about three or four times in a row. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. With the constant increase in activity during this session and with the entity actually asking us numerous times to leave and to get out and let's go, we could just tell that whoever it was we were speaking with and coming into contact with was not quite happy with us, not quite happy, we'll say, with company. I can't believe that. Two bars. Leave. I'm back on. Okay. Can you tell us why you don't want us down here, Steve? So after a little bit, we felt that it was smart and probably best to actually listen to this entity and respect its wishes and go ahead and leave the Sugar Shack area. With this penitentiary's incredibly dark and violent history is why it is considered to be one of the most haunted prisons in the world.
My final choice comes from probably one of the most notoriously haunted places in the country, if not the world, and that is the Pennhurst State School and Hospital. So one way to describe uh, being in Penhurst is like putting yourself into an emotional strainer, if you will. It brings out all of your emotions because you can definitely relate to what some of the, uh, the past patients um, had gone through. Um, the sadness, the depression, uh, the neglect, um, and yes, there were some fatalities there. It all basically hits you head on as soon as you as soon as you get onto the property. Um, it was it was really, really um, probably one of the more emotionally draining places that I've ever been to. Like little Johnny could be dropped off in the fifties for ADHD, be completely normal otherwise, and then you know he spends so many years next to people that aren't so normal and fed all these drugs and maybe he doesn't turn out so well, you know what I mean? But Penhurst was like its own separate city, you know, it, it was, they were excommunicated from the outside world. It's, it's terrible. So as we do in most locations, uh, we decided to split up. Ryan and I decided to take on the Mayflower building, while Jason and Dave went down to take on the tunnels. And what Jason and Dave captured down the tunnels through EVP definitely indicated whatever was down there did not want us there at all. Did y'all hear something? Which what? I couldn't tell. What'd it sound like? <laughs> I don't know if it was a weird... I don't even think it was a bad... I don't think you could get a water break. It almost sounded like a whisper. It almost, I don't know if I want to say what I thought it said, but it sounded like a whisper. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Did y'all hear something? Yeah. So Ryan and I decided to take on the Mayflower by starting in the basement. And at one point we decided to start ascending floor by floor by floor. Um, and then during that process we noticed as we went up throughout the Mayflower and its floors, uh, we noticed that the energy was intensifying. I'm telling you, it's a you. Corey. Corey. I heard Corey. Yeah. Very cool. Hi, Corey. Nice. nice to meet you. So as we reached the third floor, which was pretty much the the pinnacle of of the energy there inside the Mayflower. It's not ominous or anything, is it? No. <laughs> Man, I can feel it in my knees up here. Yeah. It's creepy. As we started walking down uh, this one particular hallway, we were completely blown away by what came through the pedal box. It just said Jason. Yeah. Did you hear that? It sounded like Jason's voice. It did. You're not Jason. It just said Jason. You're not our friend Jason. Who are you? That was... That was, it just said Jason again. I got chills, dude. Uh -huh. So you can imagine our uh, excitement and confusion when we heard the name Jason come across the pedal box and that it sounded pretty much just like Jason himself saying it. It was really, really interesting. It just said Jason. You're not our friend, Jason. Now, further on down the hallway, uh, we got to an area where the uh, where the patients were uh, were actually given rooms to sleep in, and um, I believe Ryan asked, "What room are you in?" And yet again, a very clear response came across the pedal box that left us speechless, pretty much. Is there anyone that lived up here? Is this your room? 18. 18? Is there a room 18? This number? I don't know. It stopped. It stopped. 
Is there anyone that lived up here? Is this your room? 18. 18. 18? Is there a room 18? This number? You're gonna have to help us find it. So with what little time we spent up there after that, we spent it looking for a room 18, but we, we never found it. Pennhurst State School and Hospital, definitely, definitely, is probably one of the more active places I've ever been to. Uh, it's one of the few locations I feel that you could go pretty much at any time and really tie into the energy, tie into the emotions, the sadness, uh, the bitterness that, uh, that, the, uh, that the patients would feel you know, while, while staying there. So next up is going to be the Randolph County Infirmary in Winchester, Indiana. Randolph County Infirmary was a place that was filled with tragedy and death. And one night, Mrs. Thornburg was coming by to lock her door, and Ida asked her for a broom. You see the broom up there? Oh, wow. And the next morning, when Mrs. Thornburg came to unlock her door so she could go get breakfast, she found Ida hanging from that broom. Her feet's on the ground, though. So she stepped, she leaned forwards about a 45 degree angle, actually choked herself to death. And so many people that have been there over the years feel like they have come in contact with the former patients and inmates that stayed there. So we spent the night inside Randolph County Infirmary to see if these legends were true. You all right? Oh, God. What? What's the matter? I just keep, something just keeps walking right in front of me. Do you guys want to hear the music? I, no, I heard it. I hear the music. So on this investigation, Jason wanted to try a new experiment with a form of audio that is known as shepherd's tones. Are you in here with us? So this audio illusion was played to help attract spirits within the area to come closer to where we were at, hopefully being able to pick them up on camera or audio. So Jason and I made our way down to the basement and into the men's dining room where there had also been a crawler seen in that area. Now I will tell you this, down at the end of the hall in the men's dining room, there is a crawler or creeper or whatever you wanna call them, and it's real. It really is here. But that's PK energy, that's psychokinetic. Right. That's created by you and me. You know, it's nothing demonic, but he is here. And he's about a foot tall when he looks like a baby octopus and that sucker can run. I mean, he zooms by you right up the walls, right across the ceilings and everything else. We wanted to do the shepherd's tones here because this is where we had the greatest sense of energy within the basement. So Jason started with the shepherd's tones and the energy within the room drastically changed. If you can hear this sound, please come closer towards it. And at one point, we were even hearing what sounded like footsteps outside of the door and even a very loud crashing sound. So hearing the footsteps and the banging outside of the door, at that point I had hoped that it was Ryan or Steve coming down to let us know it was the end of the night. Um, because I knew if it wasn't, then it was an entity or a spirit on the other side of that door, which is you know, the whole reason that we're doing this. But the amount of energy that was in the room, it kind of had me a little bit on edge with how strong that it was.
That was so having the shepherd's tones there in the basement i do think really played into the fact that these spirits were able to feed off of that and come closer and have more energy to be able to make themselves known as we were asking them to do had we not had the shepherd's tones i think we would have had you know several things happen because randolph county is a, is a very haunted place but i do think that it, it very much added to it. There are definitely spirits and entities within the Randolph County Asylum, definitely a place that I would go back to and is ultimately one of the most haunted places that I've ever been to. All right, so we just finished going over some of our favorite pieces of paranormal evidence that we've ever captured and some of the most memorable paranormal experiences that we have encountered on our paranormal quest and we hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button down below and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you're new here. Now, if you are already subscribed, make sure you turn on those bell notifications and set them to all so that you can be alerted every single time that we upload a new video. We have some amazing locations lined up that we are ready to share with you all and we are so excited to continue to bring our investigations to you here on YouTube. So until next time, guys, make sure to stay safe. Bye.